Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back. Alex, you about to go take uh, a trip across the, the wild blue sea soon. So yeah. before you take off, I got to ask you a question. Now, you've been in the real estate game for a year plus now. So I need three things that you hate about being a landlord. Three things I hate about being a landlord, I would say. Just give me one at a time. Just give me just give me one at a time. Yeah. I mean, you ain't got to do it back to back. But we'll talk about each one. I guess I would say expenses for one. And it's not that I hate it because I do well at managing the money or managing the expenses, making sure that I have the capital to, you know, afford the expenses. But it's inconvenient to have to come out of pocket for that, especially when it's out of the routine. It's out of the blue. You can't really you can prepare for it, but you can't budget for it in the short term in the sense of like you know you get set to okay i make this much per month i know how much i'm going to invest or how much i'm going to save and then you get hit with an expense it's like okay now i'm not going to save that much because i have to pay for this so um at least for me it's kind of you know it's obviously it's a inconvenience um so i would say expenses wait yeah so with with this one with expenses first uh of course, people gonna see this, and the first thing they gonna ask you, well, when you get when you get paid every month, do you account for expenses? I.e., are you putting you know the three, the five, the ten percent aside for expenses? I already know the answer. I already know the answer to that. The answer is more than likely yes. But this is the thing for people that don't know, and it's interesting in the real estate market. And Alex, of course, correct me if I'm wrong. So let's say you get you get a property, and then let's say. You're getting a thousand bucks a month in rent. Let's just say you're just starting out. You're getting a thousand bucks a month in rent. Then what you count for the mortgage, let's say, I'll use small number. Let's say the mortgage is, you know, 50% of that. So the mortgage is $500. I know everybody can be like, where the hell are they find these properties at? But that's not the mortgage, but I'm just using this as an example. But let's say the mortgage is $500. $500 then you count, you know, three to 5% for vacancy, three to 5% for maintenance. Uh, and then if you got property management, that could be between eight to 10%. But the thing is, and people just doing the math, a thousand bucks a month is $1,200. I mean, $12,000 a year. If half of that's going to the mortgage, that leaves you 6,000. The day and now you count for vacancy and you count for maintenance, you know, vacancy, five, let's say 5%, maintenance 5%. That's Let's just let's just go with a, that's a thousand bucks set to the side. So that leaves you with five thousand. If AC unit go out and it costs you seven thousand, you done lost your whole year of expenses. <laughs> yeah. That mean your whole year of, of uh income. Our water tank's only going higher, that's fifteen hundred dollars. And most people when especially when you're buying your first rental property, you're not cash flowing five, six hundred dollars a month. Hey, that should be your goal to try to do that, but they're not. You know, God forbid you need a roof. A roof gonna cost you about twelve to fifteen thousand dollars. Me, I'm like the roof expert. It's like I only buy houses that need new roofs, and then of course I just work it on the deal side. But I didn't replace more roofs than probably the people that work in the roofing companies. That's how many roofs I didn't had to replace in my day. Um, those things come up. But Alex, what what you say about that? So for the people that say, are you? you know, account for maintenance and vacancies. I will say I still don't really touch any of the income. Um, it all gets put away into reserves and it gets used as reserves. So um, I don't want to touch any of my real estate income for leisure until my cash flow is like double or triple what I need to survive. Um, Right. So all the money gets like, you know, obviously I, when I'm doing numbers to make sure for property cash flows, I account for um, like 10 percent maintenance. But really, it's like. A hundred percent of that is almost getting put away for maintenance, you know, I mean, because I'm not touching any of it. It goes straight to reserves and then I just let the reserve account build. So. All right, number two, what's the number? What's the second thing you hate about being a landlord? Number two would be I hate getting calls from tenants. 
But at the same time, I am happy that they called because I don't want to have to deal with the bigger headache if it wasn't reported. But I hate getting calls because I know there's a problem. <laughs> so, um, you know, calls, texts, whatever. And so um, luckily, the tenants that I manage myself are um, real laid back. I mean, they will only call if there is a major problem. So they don't bug me on the phone um, a whole bunch. But I did have one tenant that was kind of, you know, like to text me more often than necessary um but that you know now it's under property management and such so all right two things i want y'all to understand about alex alex is the epitome of screws me duck i guarantee you that picture he had on his background he probably got it as like a screensaver on his phone he probably hugged the phone all night alex don't like to spend for nothing <laughs> and the second thing is, Alex got bougie now. Alex used to answer his phone for everybody. Now Alex only answers his phone like <laughs> once or twice a day. He's he's high class now. So understand where this comes from. But yeah, um, but for the for the people that's watching it, you know, like I said, the people that's just starting out with uh with rentals or they thinking about rentals, um, depending on the tenant, it could be a headache. Depending on the tenant, it could be a headache, and you don't know what kind of tenant is going to be until you have them in in there and for me i'd say especially starting out you prefer your tenants when you you know your first unit your second unit and you're managing you prefer your tenants to call you when everything happened now you will have to disseminate and differentiate differentiate you know what's a necessity now or is this something that's minor the only reason why i'm saying that is because you want to be able to understand everything that's going on with the unit and then you don't want a tenant that don't call you when something small happens and then that small problem goes to something bigger and then you go to Alex number one problem, you got big expense payments. Because I didn't see even properties that I managed. It'd be a small leak, the tenant like, oh, it's no big deal. You know, they might put a pot up under there or a bucket up under there to catch the water and don't say nothing. Then they forget the buckets up under there, the bucket overflow, and then now you got to rip out all the cabinets because it didn't dry molded or it didn't, the wood has rotten and things like that. So when you just start out, you want them, you want them to call and stuff like that. Now, once you start getting multiple and you get multiple tenants and you get multiple calls, it does get frustrating because Alex, like you said, when you, when they call, you know, it's a problem. They, I mean, more than likely they only call you one time a month for, Hey, here's the rent. The other times it's a problem. Uh, and then how you mitigate that, especially when you get more properties is, uh, you start getting property management in place so they can handle those calls, uh, to, to deal with the day-to-day -day operations but that's you know when you start getting more and more i mean i don't i can't tell anybody the level of comfort of how many properties you should get before you get a property management for me after my second property i got a property management because the first that property actually i bought out of state so i had no choice but then i just saw the convenience of it and then from then on out it's been property management everywhere i went alex what say you yeah the yeah um yeah you're right you know going the property management route has been very convenient um handling that it's a uh, very efficient i notice um so it's a it's a lot more easier going that route but you know with the two tenants that i have um that i do manage myself like i said they're very very laid back so it's easy to manage those properties barely ever hear from them so but my number three i hate bad neighbors and what i mean by that and i know that's that one is probably not what was expected bad neighbors will shoo away potential tenants and i hate that because it affects your pockets um and so the solution to that obviously is if you have the opportunity to just buy up the whole block like kirby does <laughs> that is how you do it <laughs> you conquer everything um that is the most convenient way and i'm not opposed to doing that especially uh, if there's opportunities like that where i can get good deals on properties nearby i would actually prefer to do strategies like that but 
it's not often that you buy one property and then like, oh, there's another one next door that's um, for sale. You know, I know you've had the chances to to do that, but I know I'm sure you would say it's not even common that you get that either. Right. Yeah. Um, but yeah, terrible neighbors. I had an issue with that um, where I had one potential tenant and they did not want to rent because the, of the neighbors. So I would say neighbors yeah and that's you know what that's a good one and i wasn't even thinking about that one at all that's a real good one and and the way you mitigate that again i'm talking to people that's interested or people that's already in the real estate game the way you mitigate that is i call them stakeouts i do it i do it uh my wife think i'm crazy but i do it i see a i see a property that i want i'm I'm driving there. I mean, I even did it in Oklahoma and I wasn't even, I was sure, I was 100% sure as soon as I seen the property that I wasn't going to buy it, but I still did the stakeout. So what I do is I I go there during the daytime and I just sit in my car and I just people watch. Not for five minutes. I do it for hours. I'm sitting there. I might have the radio, on some talk radio very low and I'm just sitting there watching people. And that's during the morning time see what activities going on around there seeing if somebody blaring music at you know wee hours of, i mean early in the morning or just what people are doing just checking out the patterns of life and then i also go to, there around 10 o'clock at night and i'm there from like 10 to like one in the morning and i'm staked out they they i already know they think i'm the cops you know i have my food there you know i'm doing everything <laughs> i'm just sitting there just just looking yeah. I'm, that's that's what i do yeah, I don't have to buy those out, but <laughs> but I'm I'm sitting there, I'm looking to see what's going on because that's that's another way you you have to understand the ins and outs because in the end of the day, let's call it what it is, you're investing in that neighborhood. I mean, yeah. you know, you can you can get new neighbors by picking the right neighborhood, but once you it once you own the house, you don't know what's gonna go on around you. So you want to see, you want to be in the best place possible. Oh no, of course, where your money can handle the best place possible. So those independent variables that you can't control, that's how you control it. It's just, it's, I ain't going to say everybody need to do what I do, but that's one thing I do to mitigate that risk is I sit out there and I stalk the whole neighborhood. People have come up to me and ask me, hey, what you doing? And I mean... And I, I don't recommend this, especially if you're in war zone neighborhoods. I don't expect you to do that. You should know you're in a war zone neighborhood as soon as you drive in there. And you should just you turn and be like, hell no, that's not my spot. But some neighborhoods have done it. And then people actually came up. And I mean, I told them. I mean, I wasn't letting them get close where it's a confrontation or nothing like that. You know, I'm in a vulnerable position. But I've said like, hey, you know, I'm just out here. I'm I'm looking. Look, I ain't good cops or whatever. I mean, some believe me, some don't, you know. But you know, if I start seeing people like, oh, they go to police and people running the house. OK, I know I don't need to be investing in this area in the first place. But that's just, you know, one thing out there. And I actually, Alex, the one thing that I thought you was going to say, but you didn't say it. So I said is like when you first get into that, you know, get into rental properties and you got one or two units and it's like. Rents due on the first, but it's like the 28th, 29th and you sitting there looking like. I'm wondering if they're gonna pay. I'm wondering if they're gonna pay. Oh my gosh! Yes. Hey, yes. Okay. I used to oh, hate no. that. Like, oh. oh my gosh! <laughs> yes. Yes. I'm. I'm so glad yeah. you brought that up. I can't believe I didn't think of that. I think I didn't think of that because the most I ever thought about that was when I was managing the duplex myself. That was the worst. Oh, and every was... time. I get a property and a tenant, even if the tenant's been there already, I have to know that they're going to pay me. So like, I need to see that like first like stamp, like, okay, I got the first check. Okay. They paid the first month. Then you don't know until like the second, third, you're like, okay, all right. They're like, they're, they're regulars, but nah, like, yes. <laughs> oh, that, yeah. <laughs> Oh man, yeah. that is a nightmare. Yeah. People don't know how stressful it is approaching <laughs> the last few days in the month, and you're like, I hope they pay. 
So, yeah. Yeah, I will agree. Yeah, and, and yeah, when you yeah, when you start off, that's 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 gonna be a stressor. I mean, especially when you just starting off, you're like, all right, I'm I didn't check all the boxes, you know, I didn't negotiate the deal down, yeah. I didn't work hard, I didn't put the tenant in there, and then it's like, oh, is they gonna pay? Is they gonna pay? Is they gonna pay? And then uh and and again, going back to models that I the things that I go after or things that I do to try to mitigate as much as possible. My rule is this. My rule is it's late after the it's late after the fifth. Uh, but it's due on the first. That's that's my motto. But this is what I also this is another caveat I put in there. The other caveat I put in there is if you call me on the first to tell me you're not going to be able to pay, we have a problem. Because you knew you weren't going to be able to pay a week, two weeks ago. Now, if you call me, you know, let's say Rich doing the first, you call me on the 20th, the 18th, you know, something happened, yada, 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 yada. I could work with you because now you gave me time to prepare that it's going to be a shortage in funds in this area. So I can work with you then. But it, on the first, oh, no. That means this is exactly this is exactly how I look at it. When somebody called me on the due date of the rent and they don't have the rent. I look at it as you had the money yesterday and you had a decision. Do I pay my rent or do I go club and do what I want to do? And you just decided to go clubbing. That's exactly how I look at it. So yep. all games are off. If you call me today, the rents do and say, Oh, I can't pay. I'm, I'm pulling everything out. Notice to quit eviction. I'm going through the whole <laughs> process. I'm doing through the whole process. Like, uh, uh-uh, heck no. Cause <laughs> It's like they playing games with you, so yeah. <laughs> so that's why. So 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 yeah. When uh, that when that was starting off, starting off, I was like, all right, all right. And then and and I, I can't lie, it was so my first two prop my first two properties, you know, was Section Eight. So I knew I was gonna get half of the money. I knew I was gonna get half of the money uh, yeah. through Section Eight. Now well, this other half, you know, but yeah, that that was like. Those are like stressful times starting yeah. off, like oh, oh man, like yeah. like if they go yeah. pay now, now yeah, I mean, no. once you got what you have, you know more, you're like okay, All that's right. what I'm saying. Like now I can I can stomach it. Like the first, like the two tenants I managed myself, like they're they're always good. Like I never have to worry. I don't even have to remind them. Like one pays early. And the other one, he he mails in a money order like as soon as he gets it, he's it's already sent. Um, yeah. But man, with the duplex, oh gosh, that was that was rough. Like I had one tenant on the duplex that was like I learned like okay he's solid, and I still had the worry just because it was like a new area and all that. Um, but I learned okay he's solid, he's good, he's a good tenant. But then, man, the other one, that was a nightmare. But yeah. It was so funny that you brought that up because, like, I haven't had that worry since I got the property management. But, like, since you brought it up, I was like, oh, man. Brought, like, brought back uh, traumatic memories. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, it was it was like that even, like, because my second, my third property was commercial. I was worried. I mean, because, I mean, I, I can't lie. I had some I had some knucklehead tenants that I inherited from buying the property. And they they thought it was, you know, it was they they thought they owned the spot they thought they owned the spot oh we'll get to you when we get to you and uh 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 ain't no get to me when you get to me no no it's, it's pay pay due right now you know so yeah that was that was it was nerve-wracking but again going back to the things to mitigate it i told you what i do with with tenants especially tenant uh don't call me the day of and say you can't pay because that's how i look at it but you know, set those set those ground rules early. I mean, my first two tenants, like I said, they call me if it's something that's going on, and I've I've had these tenants since I started uh, the rental property, started doing rental properties. Excuse me. They know call me soon. Something come up. You know, it's like this. You in the EMS going to the hospital? I better hear some blurring in the background. Call me soon as it pop off. I don't want to hear about doctor bills on the first. I ain't trying to hear that. <laughs> Call me, broke leg. Uh, call me. Mm-hmm. Uh, all right, you, you you head to the hospital. All right, I, I, we can work with you this. We can work with you this month. You know, but I don't. I don't play that. I. That's that's one thing. But you set the ground rules early, and then just be like, look, this is you know what I expect. Especially if you manage yourself, this is what I expect. 
if this don't happen, this is what I'm going to do. And you hold to the line because what happened is, it's things out there called professional tenants. They know all the run, the tenant laws and they're going to try to push you to the max to see how much you can get away with, how much they can get away with on you. And then the more leeway you give, the more leeway you give, the more leeway you give, you only think you're doing the screwing yourself over. And then, you know, people have that mantra of, hey, but that's, it's a family in there, man. You got to look out for other people. But the thing that people don't realize when the tenant don't pay, they're screwing over me and my family. Because contrary to popular belief, a lot of these landlords out here, mom and pop landlords, they have, you know, one, two rentals, maybe they don't have extra discretionary funds in their own household to pay two mortgages. Right. They don't have that ability. So when a tenant don't pay and then, you know, you slap that eviction notice on them, everybody want to look at the landlord as the bad guy, like the landlord is sitting there with a million bucks in his pocket. But the truth is the landlord got obligations also. And the obligations should be fulfilled by the rent that's paid. Most landlords don't have three and four mortgage payments in a in a back pocket. I mean, yeah, you can say, oh, that's how you're supposed to do it. But let's just talk about the truth. They don't have that money sitting there. So they got to do something or their family is suffering or their family is short on funds because there's a tenant and they're not paying. So you're new in, uh, in aspiring landlords set the ground rules early and stick to them and I, alex i'm gonna add one more because i know you probably want to add that one in there and we can cut it off don't rent to family and friends i just wanted to throw that out there before we cut it off though i do want to say i laugh because kirby he he is fair when he says you know at least give me a heads up i could work with you but man when kirby's ready to kick someone out <laughs> He's in there pillaging the whole village. I mean, it's yeah. like eviction notice. He put a lien on their mom's house. He he did everything. I mean, I'm, I'm like, trying, I'm, going for, I'm I'm trying to go for everything. I I remember one. I remember one. And the thing was, was I had a connection. I had a connection with his job. I'm not gonna say what his job was. I had a I knew people at his job. I already knew he got fired from the job, but he still was in there. But he already paid, like, this was on, like, the 16th of the month. And I knew he already fired, quit, whatever you want you want to call it. Fired, quit the job. And he was just sitting there. He could have just called and like, hey, man, I quit. Blah, blah, blah. But I was already on top of it. I'm, And this is in another state. I didn't already call the property manager. Like, look, this was going to happen. The first going to come. He don't have a job. He's not going to pay. I need that eviction notice there on the second. We're not waiting to the 15th. We ain't giving none of that stuff. We're going right at it. And I was like, don't say nothing now. We're just going to wait to that day. I was like, matter of fact, I will call, email, and text you when game on. 12.02, I sent out an email. <laughs> 8 o'clock that morning, text message, phone call, showtime. Go, 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 go. <laughs> I, I, was, I, was, I was already turning that property over by the 5th, man. <laughs> by the 5th, I was... I was already I had cleaners in there and everything, man. But the guy, he he up and moved out because he knew what I was coming for. <laughs> oh man, went in like the SWAT. With all that being said, guys, if you have any comments, let us know down below. Uh, like the video, don't forget to share and subscribe. And we'll see you guys in the next one.